Welcome to part three of Upstating Your Mini Lake, the carriage. One of the last things we established in the last video, the bed extension, was to go any further with drilling and tapping holes. And I think the next thing was the lead screw and pillow blocks. We needed the carriage and that thing was in pretty bad condition. After the first video, the disassembly off camera, I took that carriage apart and uh, it was bad. I, I have some footage of me doing it. So let's go back in time and you can see some of that before we go forward. Let's do that. This mini lathe carriage needs to come apart for multiple reasons. Let's start taking this thing apart. I'm just going to wing it. I don't know what they tell you to do in the instructions, but I think I should be able to get it taken apart. I have successfully taken apart the carriage and cleaned it up the best I could with a, a wire wheel, some uh, mineral spirits. Okay, so that's where we are. The apron is all cleaned up. The top of the carriage with the gib plates go, that's all cleaned up. According to the instructions, what they want you to do is just take that whole carriage, like when you took it off of your smaller machine. Just loosen the gib plates and slide the whole carriage on there. Turn the whole machine or the bed upside down, hanging off the table so you can move the carriage up and back while you adjust the gib plate tensioning screws, tightening screws, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I agree with turning it upside down. I don't agree with just putting the carriage on there. I've already taken it apart and cleaned it all and stoned. I stoned all the, the ways in here so it slides easier. What I want to do is turn the bed over and put it on three points on my surface plate and adjust these so the bed is parallel with the surface plate. Then when I clamp my carriage onto the bed, I can take a surface gauge and see how parallel these surfaces are. I don't want to use the same screw on adjustment method they used. I want to be able to just tighten it on and they're finished. That's going to take some work. I already know that these are not parallel, but I need to check it a lot better. I need to adjust this bed parallel with the world. Let's do that. Okay, the bed is upside down on my surface plate, sitting on three points. I adjusted these two points front to back to be parallel, and then this third point side to side to be parallel with those two. I used a half thousand best test indicator on my surface gauge to check that. Let me give you a close up of that. First slide. Second slide. Within a few tenths. This is on the single side with the one adjustment screw. 
it's about a tenth under zero. Now that the bed is set up on the surface plate, parallel with the surface plate, I want to clamp on the carriage. All right, I'm finished setting all that up. You saw in the indicators, they're all zero. So we know that the uh, ways are parallel with the surface plate. Now, the gib, I'm not sure what you call them, where the gib plates are bolted to. When I measure them, they're all cattywampus. They're all over the place. They are not parallel with the world. Now I know why they have this kind of setup with the screws opposing each other to try to get it on even surface, square or flat. That ain't going to work. To be able to just put a shim on here, this needs to be parallel with these surfaces with the ways it looks like i'm going to have to mill them flat or parallel what i'm going to do is indicate it and write down where it is on my indicator like this end i believe is zero and then it goes to a plus dimension and when i go to the other side it's a minus dimension but I'm going to write all that down so when I put it into the mill, I can duplicate those dimensions and know that it's as parallel as I'm going to be able to get it. I brought the carriage over to the mill and I put it in my vise. There's no parallels under it because if you remember, I had all different numbers on uh, the part that I'm going to be cutting. Set it to zero. This is a plus two, minus nine. It's a minus five. I tapped it around until I duplicated those same numbers. Zero, plus two, minus nine, and minus five. I'm going to bring it in a little closer and uh, verify those numbers. You could watch the indicator. If you remember, it was zero in this corner, plus two, minus nine, and minus five. I'll bring this up, and I already went through this once. That's about... Zero. This took a while. When you do it, you can't have any parallels under it. And you have to grab on a very little so that the sides don't influence where that part is. This was a plus two. That's about plus two and a half. I'll go with that. This is supposed to be minus five on this end. Then we go minus five. And this is supposed to be minus nine. Minus nine. Okay. I'm going to start milling at my lowest end.
I'm back at the lathe. It's clamped on. Zero. Zero. Let me bring it to the other side. Zero. Zero. Okay. Let's get on to measuring my shims. To measure the shims, I'm just going to take a direct reading from here. That's zero. That's plus 15. Zero. That's plus 15. Okay, so I need at least like a, a 17,000 17, shim here. 17. Let's see on the other side. Ten thousands, ten thousands. So I need a, a eleven or twelve thousand shim here. I'm going to write down twelve. Okay. All right. That come out pretty good. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do before anything else is I'm going to take it off of those three points before I knock this thing over playing games with it. Okay. Now let's do that. I've made a series of shims here. It's the gib plates that are been machined flat. Some two thousands, three, four, five, some ten thousands, and fifteen thousand shims. Uh, I made those by sandwiching the shim stock between some scrap aluminum and uh, drilling through them, machining the outside to the right width and stuff and right length. This has been machined like you've seen, and uh, so have the gib plates. So I have written on here about a 12,000 shim and a 17,000 shim. We're going to do that and see how it works. Let's do that. Okay, I believe I have it. I have had to change out those shims. I'm glad I made so many different varieties. I had to in, out, up. <laughs> There's no play and it moves freely. It's a little loose over here. Not that I could feel anything, but it moves easier. Uh, okay. Now I can go on, put the apron on. Uh, once the apron is together and on, I could start uh, putting the lead screw in and drilling those holes for the pillow blocks. Let's do that. Now that the carriage, the saddle, has been adjusted so it moves smoothly across the ways, we can get back to where the instructions send us to mounting the lead screw. They want you to have a loose apron and they want you to bring the saddle into the middle, approximate middle of the ways. Let's put this lead screw in here. This is all going to be approximate because we're going to be bringing that up and back and up and back. Engaging and disengaging your half nut until these pillow blocks are in the proper 
place. The lead screw, the head side of the machine, which they refer to as the left, make sure the lead screw with the keyway is towards the head side. Let's just lock the half nut. That will adjust the lead screws in the center of the half nut. Now if we just clamp these pillow blocks We know that this apron is in the center of the lead screw and we could tighten these down. Okay, now what we need to do is bring those pillow blocks to the proper place. And the one on the left side, the head side of the machine, needs to be even or flush with the end of the casting here. I'll loosen these up. And move this lead screw. The half nut's still engaged. Okay, I brought the pillow block to the end. Now I'm going to disengage this, hold this parallel, or horizontal, I should say. And clamp this again. Engage, disengage. Let's bring this over to the opposite side again. We're going to move this up and back to adjust those pillow blocks up and down and make sure they're in the right place multiple times, loosening these C clamps. Let's do that. You know, I'm pretty satisfied with where these pillow blocks are. So all the way to the left, this one seems to, it engages and disengages the half nut pretty nice. What I'm gonna do is mark those holes. I don't have a hole punch but I do have a, a quarter inch drill. The through holes on these pillow blocks are about 253 thousandths. I'm just gonna mark them, put a dimple in there. Man, this stuff cuts easy. All right, I have to move those clamps and do the same thing to the top holes. Okay, I went ahead and uh, moved the clamps, spotted those top holes. And what I'm gonna do now is remove all this and uh, drill my through holes. It's a number nine drill for a six millimeter screw.
course I dropped the screw. All right. Screws are in, but they are not tight because I have to go up and back with the carriage again to make sure that the pillow blocks are in the proper place. Now with a little luck, that is in the right place. What we're going to do next is drill and tap for the change gear stud. Let me bring that camera around so you could watch what I'm doing here. The first thing they tell you to do is scribe a line off of this surface five-eighths of an inch back. They also say if it's less than 19 30 seconds or more than 21 30 seconds on your original machine, put it where the original machine was. And mine was 9 sixteenths, which is 562. It's 30 thousandths less than what they're saying. So I'm going to put that at 9 sixteenths. I adjusted uh, a square here and I'm just going to scribe it. All right. Now it tells you to take the change gear adjuster bracket place it on here and scribe where that curved slot is. I scribed on the inside of this slot, as you can see, and I scribed a line nine sixteenths from the end of the bed that's how my last machine was nine sixteenths i measured to find the center point of all of that and i come up with this point right here i'm going to center punch drill through Looking good. The tap drill for an M8 by 1.25 is 265 thousandths in diameter. That's a pretty big drill to be going through there. I What I like to do is measure the web and take a drill that size and drill it first with that and it'll create a hole for that web to follow. Let's see if this is gonna work. Okay, that's through. Let's change drills and uh, drill my tap drill through. I have the small hole going through and I'm taking my 265 diameter drill and going to drill through. Looks like it's right in the middle of the lines I scribed. Okay, I have to get it through kind of an uneven surface on the other side and uh, tap it. Put a little oil on here. 
Let's see if I can do this. Right. It looks like it's in the right place. Let's see what happens when I put the bracket on here. All right. I was really worried about this one because it has to be in the right place. Everything else you can kind of fudge. All right. What's next? <laughs> What's next is putting this whole thing back together again. With the carriage put on here properly, I was able to mount the lead screw and drill and tap for the uh, change gear stud. I'm happy the way all that come out. And according to the instructions, the next thing is putting it all back together. I think I'm going to wrap up this video and save all that for my next video. So, until next time, enjoy. Enjoy.